Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I know lately I've been posting more asmr -E type videos, but for this particular one, I wanted to try to explain my process since a couple of you asked me to do that. For this portrait, I'm using my Etcher Everyday Sketchbook. This is the cold pressed version. It's 230 GSM, I believe, and it is 100% cotton. Um, with my process, I always start with a wet on wet wash. So that's what you saw me doing with the large brush. I was just putting clean water over the areas I wanted to apply paint to. And I'm doing it in stages here because I wanted the paint to land in certain spots without bleeding too much into where I didn't want to go. And since I wanted this portrait to be partially in the light, partially in shadow, well, mostly in shadow, but partially in light. So I first applied a very thin layer of a light yellow. The paint I'm using is Core. And so the yellow I'm using is a PY-154. And then in the middle, like basically the mid-tones, I am using quinacridone burnt orange. And then I'm applying indigo for the shadow parts. With the way I've been painting currently, I don't try to concern myself with staying in the lines because I like seeing the colors blend and bleed not only onto the subject itself, but also into the background. And for this particular portrait, I'm using flat brushes because the I wanted to really accentuate the angles of the face. Because at the time I painted this, I had binge watched uh, the Ahsoka series and it reinvigorated my love of Clone Wars era Anakin Skywalker. So I wanted to pay homage to the animation style of the series, but still in my style. Another thing I really like to do is add the splatters. And I do that for two reasons. I want the portrait to look like it's kind of dissolving into the background, but also exploding out of the background. So the key for me is to start with really light layers. As you can see, it's just drying. Those areas that looked like they were pretty saturated have gotten a lot lighter, which is good for this particular style because my style requires a lot of layering and I want to see those layers. Like I do blend certain areas, but I want to see those layers pop out because I think that's what makes watercolor unique from other mediums. I also tend to break a lot of the watercolor rules they tell you not to do. As you can see, there's a lot of water on the left side of this painting. I'm going to wipe it up, don't worry. <laughs> but learning the rules and then breaking them in a way that makes watercolor more fun for me helped me to let go of the fear of even starting a painting. So once I get all my local colors down, I like to switch to a large round brush. I think the size I'm using here is a 10. And the reason why I use a larger brush is because, again, I'm not trying to get too bogged down by details. I want to really just block in the shapes of the shadows. And I'm basically just going to keep going back and forth between blocking in the midtones, which I am using a combination of the Quinn Burnt Orange and a little bit of the Indigo to create kind of a burnt sienna-y kind of color for the shadows on the right side of his face. Well, his right side, our left side, while also slowly layering in the indigo for the shadows. I want to go slowly because I don't want to go too dark too soon because I also want to make sure that I can still lift out any area of highlights that might have gotten covered up. And then while I'm doing all of this, I'm also keeping the background in mind. So I'm adding some splatters with the same colors that I use for the skin so that the colors are incorporated throughout the entire portrait. I will sometimes add a different hue of blue, like I'm adding ultramarine as well as the indigo to this particular portrait just to, um, just to have some kind of variation because the indigo is kind of muted and greenish and the ultramarine is going to be a little warmer. Plus I'm going to add some red later and red is not in his portrait but I wanted to add some red just to represent you know we have the blue his original blue lightsaber and then the red lightsaber he has as Darth Vader. So I think at this point I'm just going to keep going back and forth with adding shadows lifting parts that got a little too dark and adding some splatters whenever I kind of just feel like it. So now I'm just going to stop talking and I'm going to let you watch the rest of this part of the process. I'll jump back in when I get to the finishing touches.
So usually around this point, I decide that the values are pretty much where I want them to be. And if I need to adjust them, I can do them after I lay down the color pencils. The color pencils is where my portraits or illustrations usually start to come together because this is the point where I can reestablish the line art and I can use the color pencils to either do some additional shading or I can add a little bit more variation in the skin tone by using certain colors like a little bit more pink or a little bit more like an earth green. And I prefer to do my line art with color pencil because I have more control than I would with watercolor line art. And it's more subtle than ink, which means it'll look more integrated with the watercolor and it won't stand out as much as being line art. And the color pencils I'm using are a combination of the Faber-Castell Polychromos and the Caran d'Ache Luminance color pencils. I love both brands, but for watercolor specifically, I prefer the Faber-Castell. They're oil-based, whereas I think the Caran d'Ache are a combination of oil and wax, and the wax will sit on top of the paper a little bit more, whereas the oil-based Faber-Castells seem to not sink into the paper, but they just integrate with the watercolors more seamlessly for me. But most importantly, I use the color pencils to reestablish the sketch under the watercolor because my whole purpose for doing these um, portraits in, in such a loose way is because I wanted, I didn't want to cover up the sketch. That's why when I draw the sketch, I don't erase it like a lot of other artists do. I want to see the sketch underneath. That's why I draw with a darker pencil. And so when I go back in with the color pencil, I get to reestablish that sketch and let it shine through the paint. Because at the end of the day, the actual sketch part is probably my favorite part of the process. As much as I love to paint and I love watercolor so much, but drawing just edges it out just a touch. So at this point, I have about a couple minutes left in the video, but I've run out of stuff to say. <laughs> so I'm going to let you watch the rest of the process. And before I go, I want to thank each and every one of you that have subscribed or even just watched my videos. I wasn't expecting to have this many people want to watch these videos. <laughs> and because I really just post them so that I can have somewhere to post the videos, I'm going to record my process regardless of anybody, if anybody's watching. But the fact that a lot of you have clicked subscribe because you actually want to see what I'm doing, that means a lot to me. And that being said, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to those who are going to watch to the end so you can see the final results. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.